Hello, I'm Margan McGregor for UROCKS Literacy Links. What we're going to do is begin looking at literacy links and what is literacy links. One of the things you might want to tell your students was how literacy links was developed. What they did is they got together and they decided, well, there's a lot of reading programs out there. They looked at program A. What's good about this program? What's not so good? Program B, what's good about this program? What's not so good? And they took all the best of the different programs that they could and put it into one program. And what they've come up with is a program that is fast, it's meant to be delivered in about 30 hours, and work quickly and be effective and make a lot of ground. These students have to catch up. Nobody's standing still. They have to catch up to a moving target already. So time is a critical component here. Then what you want to do on the very first lesson is get to know the student a little bit and tell them about the program. And you might want to start with looking at how the brain functions. So you have a simple diagram like this, break it into half and explain to kids we know that the hemisphere, the brain is broken into two hemispheres. The left hand side of the brain deals with language, written symbols. The right hand side of the brain is a bit more pictures and spatial. We know also that reading involves sounds. Our primary language is spoken language. That's how we learn language to begin with. But when kids have to read, they have to put it into secondary form, which is written symbols. And for some students, that doesn't happen easily. It's important that kids know that we'll be doing a lot of repetition because what we're trying to do is get the pathways beaten down. And how do we improve memory? It takes a lot of work, a lot of repetition over the same ground, like beating a pathway down in the, in the woods. You have to go over it many, many times. Some students will say, I know that. That's too easy for me. I know cat. And they'll be a little bit put off, especially older students. So it's important to let them know that this program will go as fast as you can, slow as they must, and there'll be a lot of repetition. And it gets hard very quickly. So let's take a little bit of a look at, well, what are some of the materials? We know that the Literacy Links comes with these little pieces. We call them the connection pieces. And we actually get to move them around to help make sounds and letters and words and build up from there. After you've gone through the expectations, you can go into the components or the materials that the students will be using. And one of them, of course, is the student workbook. And in the workbook, there are the seat work activities and some reading activities, word sorts, and a variety of the different components of the end parts of the lesson. So once they've gone through expectations, the materials, they can begin starting with the actual lesson. Continuing on with lesson one, we're actually going to begin looking at letters. And of course, we know that there are 26 letters in the alphabet. There are vowels and consonants. And if you ask a student, what is a vowel, they typically will say, A-E-I-O-U. Sometimes why? And yes, those are examples of vowels. But a vowel is actually a letter that's formed with an open sound. It's an uninterrupted airflow from your lungs out of your mouth. Ah, e, eh, eh, ah. Nothing's interfering. That's an open sound. And that's important because we'll be talking about open syllables later on. All of the other letters are consonants. Those sounds are actually interfered with in some way by your tongue, redirected through your nose, n, n, t, p, or stopped in some way. So a closed sound, an open sound, vowels and consonants. And you'll notice that the sounds are paired, and they fit nicely together. And a lot of times, students think that when they make words, they're going to fit together like that. But that's not the case. These are fit together in these ways to show that there's a relationship between these letters. Some of these letters are voiced, and some of them are unvoiced. So let's take a look here. P and B. P, B. If you have a student touch their vocal cords while they make this, P, B. Or cover their ears, P, B. And ask them where they hear the sound or where they feel the vibration. Okay, let's have Maria try this. Maria. You can put your hands over your ears or touch here and see what you, feels better for you. Imitate after me. B. B. And you can feel your vocal cords working. B. Is your voiced sound? B. Is unvoiced. Another pair. T and D. So, Maria. T. T. D. T. D. 
Unvoiced, d, voiced. We want to have the sound stay light. We don't want duh. We want d. We don't want b. We want b. Nice and light. But it is important that they go t, d. They keep the unvoiced and the voiced. Moving on to another grouping of letters. K, 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 g. We also know our little students will say, I know that those letters can make other sounds. And actually, that's what the little triangle means. It's a cautionary sound because these letters can say more than one sound. So G can say G okay. or can say J. J. C can say K or S. And those do show up later on in other lessons. More groupings with the mouth the same. And a student will say, whoa, that's strange. So cough would be an example of GH saying f, the unvoiced sound. It can also say G as in ghost. Moving on to V, v. Cautionary sound again with the TH, we can have th, as in thin unvoiced or th as in the, the voiced sound. Notice over here again groupings, same mouth formations, s, cautionary for z, nose would be an example there, and z, z, s, z, sh, ch, which can say three sounds. Again, the cautionary note as in Chad, K, as in Chris, or Sh, as in Chef, and J, Ch, J. Again, the mouth form, the same, Ch, J. And moving on to the vowels. And of course, students will know already that vowels can have two sounds as well. And we're only going to be looking at the short sounds to begin with. So the sounds would be i, e, a, 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 and i. Now, the reason they're arranged like this is because if you watch the mouth as you're saying them, i, e, a, the mouth is dropping further and further open. That again is why they're arranged like this instead of the typical a, E, I, O, and U, and sometimes Y that students will throw at you. So that's one of the things that's important to note here, because otherwise they wonder why is it like that. And you can put down on the hint on the little box on your lesson plan, they'll give you some hints as to words that you can put besides these to help kids remember. So for example, I, in, E, wet, A, as in at, A, as in a. Ah, as in on, and something like myth. Because we want the short sound here. It sounds like a short I. And once you've introduced the idea of vowels and consonants, then you can move on to syllables. And we're going to be working with short syllables first. Of course, what is a syllable? A syllable is a word or part of a word with one vowel sound, as in at. We've got a vowel a. It's the actual, remember we talked about open and closed sounds, a vowel being an open sound. In order to say a vowel, you have to open your mouth. Ah, that's what makes the beat. And you can have your students clap their names or other words in order to pick out the beat. So most students are familiar with this. So Maria, your name is Maria. Let's beat out your name. Maria. Ah, how many syllables? Three. Three. Let's try happy. How many? Today, today, yesterday, yesterday. So we're getting three syllables, two syllables, one syllable, and each time your mouth has to open to make that vowel, you get a syllable sound. And we're looking at closed syllables. And why are they closed? Remember we talked about consonants being closed sounds? In order to get a closed syllable, it has to end with a consonant. It keeps the short guy in jail. We've got the little short vowel, at and you're going to be working with closed syllables a lot at the very beginning. 
So now we're going to move into reading of closed syllables. So Maria, this sound says All right, if that says it, what does this say? If I add a k, it, k. A lot of students will want to say k. It's important that you have them say the sound. Excellent. And then fast. K. If that says kit, and I change it to it, kit. Excellent. And if I take out, if I reverse the sounds, put the t in front, now it says Excellent. If I take out the and put in, what's this say? Ch chip. Excellent. If that says chip, take out the i, putting in a. Ch it says now? Ch chap. chap. Excellent. If that says chap, take out the p and add t. It says? Chat. Excellent. And the next part is spelling tracking with individual sounds and with closed syllables. So Maria, come on up. I'm going to have you spell some sounds. So I'm going to give you a sound and you point to the letter or letters that might make that sound. Okay? P. P. B. B. T. T. D. And k, good, g, g, and f, and f, and f, again, good. What else can say g in that row? There we go, v, z, z, where is it? There we go, s. Z. Z. And z. z. Good. Shh. Shh. Ch. Ch. Shh. Shh. And shh. Shh. Excellent. J. J. K. K. And k. K. And k. Excellent. Moving on to the vowels, I want you to point to. Okay, that's e. Point to i. I. A. 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 I. I. Another i. I. E. 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 Big mouth open a bit more. E. 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 Elephant. E. 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 Excellent. And now we'll do chains with spelling syllables. So, Maria, what's this sound say? At. At. If that says at, I want you to make it say cat. At. Cat. Excellent. Now, some students might pull down a K here because K, K says K. And in that case, just correct them. Say, yes, that does say K. What's another way? This is how we spell it. So if that says cat, make it say fat. What am I taking out? K. And now it's e t. Excellent. That says fat. Make it say fit. What am I taking out? Ah. Mm. Putting in e. And it says e t fit. fit. Excellent. And now we move on to seat work. And for this, of course, we use the student workbook. So the first activity is always a word sort. With the word sort, we have letters or sounds and words. And you want the student to read all of the sounds, all of the words, and then match and write in the words into the appropriate box, sounding as they go. So, Maria, what does this say? Excellent. And the words? Pet, pet, set, shot, shut, sit, fog, tip, path, fed, sad, dish. 
Excellent. So where would Pat go? Which box would that fit into? Excellent. Pat. Pat. Good. And the next word? Pat. 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 And the next word? Set. 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 Shot. Sh. Ah. Shot. Excellent. And you would continue on for all of the words. The next activity would be spelling. And spelling is done the way any spelling list is given, where you say the word, read a sentence in context, and say the word again. The student repeats it and sounds it out letter by letter. So let's give it a go. First word is pet. My dog is my best pet. 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 Sound? Et. Okay, that says i. Make it say e. 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 Elephant e. 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 Now it says pet. Excellent. Next word is shop. I love to shop for shoes. Shop. Sh. Ah. Shop. Excellent. Next word is bug. Bug. Bug, bug. Another word, zig. He likes to zig and zag down the street. Zig. Z. Say the word. Zig. Good. Z. E. G. Zig. Excellent. And we continue on until all of the words are spelled. What we're going to do now is go into the read and sort puzzles. At this stage, the students track and read the sentences out loud. Later on, they'll be tracking and reading, and there may be some written activities. So make sure you check your notes after lesson six. Okay, let's have you start here and read out loud for me, please. Chat to the vet to get the pet to beg. A little faster. Chat to the vet to get the pet to beg. Excellent. Okay, next sentence. The dog on top of the pot can beg. The dog on top of the pot can beg. Excellent. And we would continue on with all of the sentences. We want them to try to sound like, start to sound like they are actually reading more fluently. So repetition, again, remember that going over it again is important. So feel free to have them reread to build some fluency with that. The next activity in their book is the read and sort puzzles. They're going to use the words to make a sentence of their own, so they can have them read the words out loud and then have them make it make sense, so it makes a sentence. Uh, you could even practice capitals and periods if you wanted to here. So, Maria, what do you notice about these words? Is there a capital letter anywhere there? Capital Z. And what does that word say? It's at the beginning. Okay, and what's it say? Zip. Okay. Do you notice a period anywhere? Shut. Okay, so that tells you something about the sentence? What at words the end. Good. So can you make a sentence for me that has zip at the beginning and shut at the end? What would it be? Z -ip. Okay, and what would make sense? The. Mm -hmm. Sound it out. The. Uh, mm -hmm. Bag. B. Ag. Shut. Sh. Uh, Zip the bag shut. Excellent. And notice she used crossing out to help keep track and eliminate the words she's already used. So that will help her keep track of what she's used. Okay, read the sentence for me. Zip the bag shut. Smoother. Zip the bag shut. Very good. And have her continue on with the read and sort so that she's had a chance to practice writing and reading again. All helps reinforcing us that beating the path down one more time. The next activity that you work on to is filling in the blanks or close. First time it uses letter sounds, and then she has to have them fit into the sentence to make sense. So what are the sounds? Sh, t, uh, or g, p, g, uh. All right, what does this say? That blank is blank. Okay, what would make sense? That shop. Excellent. Sh is shut. Excellent. Sh that shop is shut. Very good. Okay, and this one. Put the 
bag on the thing. What would make sense? Bag on the peg. Put the bag on the peg. Excellent. And again, she would continue to finish this, rereading as necessary, because that's a chance for building fluency. Fill in the blanks two instead of letters. Now what we're going to have is words. So the same procedure. Have her read the words. Chop, jet, dug, bat, sat, jug. Excellent. And now read this sentence. The pig blank up the fig. The pig dug mm -hmm. the ug up the fig. Excellent. The whole sentence. The pig dug up the fig. Smoother. The pig dug up the fig. Excellent. Second one. Put the pop in the blank and sip it. Put the pop in the jug. Good. Sound it out. Jug. Uh, jug. Read the sentence. Put the pop in the jug and sip it. Excellent. And again, continue on until the page is complete, rereading as much as necessary for fluency. And when we continue on, now we have picture puzzle. And what they're going to do here is look at the picture on the left-hand side of the page and pick out the appropriate letters and write the word at the end. Again, having them reinforce the idea of sounding as they go. This one's done for you, so let's see what they did here. What's this? Fish. And so they went f Fish. And they Fish. wrote it over there. Okay, I want you to do this one. What is this? Hmm. Bath. It could be a bath, it could be a tub, right? So let's see what, what fits, what makes sense. Uh, uh, bath. Bath. And writing sounding as you go? Uh, uh, bath. Excellent. Try another one. What's that look like? I don't know what it's called. Mm, spin the. Top. Top. Excellent. Okay, so what letters? T. A. P. Top. T. A. Top. Excellent. And we continue on with that. And we're done with our seat work for the day. The final part of the lesson will involve reading. And depending on the level of your student, that reading may begin to take a bigger and bigger chunk. And you will have materials that are graded, so you can pick out things that will be appropriate for each student. And you actually can go to the library and get library books, or you can use the students' workbooks or student, their textbooks from school for practice, because the reading, of course, is the bottom line.